our internet. On a cold wet day last spring I was given the opportunity to visit Homebush, a private museum that's really open to the public. So of course I took my camera along with me. Homebush was settled by William and John Deans in 1850. The Deans brothers were among the earliest European settlers in Canterbury, arriving in 1843 and originally farming in what is now Rickerton, before moving out to Homebush, at the edge of the Canterbury Plains, where there was more room for them to expand their farm. The farm is still run by the Deans family, and in the early 90s it was turned into a private museum. The way it started this enterprise, should we say, the Historical Society of 27 years ago? Uh, 92. 92. The idea was that at that point the buildings were in disarray, the tree had fallen through the roof, holes in the roof, water coming in, they weren't used much as farm buildings. Um, it was, was not a really farm back then, of course, but she decided that this when, when her and husband Jim, the late Jim, Deans took over the farm, she wanted to preserve these buildings historically. And of course the farm didn't have, have enough money to do that, so Louise started a, um, a tourist business. The museum used to have regular open days when the public could visit, but nowadays it's only open by appointment. And up until COVID, which has wrecked all of our lives to one extent or another, came along, there were, I don't know how many, but it was about that up to four and a half thousand people came through here, from, mostly from tour buses off the cruise ships, came through after a while. This would be part of the, the tours off the, off the ships, and, and that provided income for Louise to restore these buildings. And she's done a magnificent job over the years with the tourist venture to keep this place afloat and, and restore all these buildings. The future is now up in the air, of course, with COVID and no tour ships, no tours. Um, we just have people like you coming through now, smaller groups, and that's all we have to sustain ourselves with the you know, paying insurances and the alarm systems and all that sort of thing. So at the moment we're struggling as a society. The future is unknown. We're just hoping that we'll be able to maintain it, keep it going for the future. And, and I guess Chris who now the homes of here, um, will in the future will take over from our generation and you know, maintain all this in the status in now and possibly improve it. You're probably well aware of the the home which homes there before the open trees over there which fell down in the earthquake. You know that's the the photos and the paint and all that, that was a total disaster. I mean and it's amazing how that building fell down and these ones stayed here. The museum is spread across several of the old farm buildings with an incredible collection of artifacts illustrating the lives of early European settlers. Everything from farm equipment to domestic items plus memorabilia specific to the Dean's family. The bricks, etc., came from a family who started a pottery up in Glen Tunnel in the 1870s, and the bricks came from that. Like any small country museum, the collection has been added to over the years by other local families looking for a home for items handed down by their grandparents. So the museum is packed with a wonderful mishmash of every item imaginable. I know some of my colleagues from the big museums would have preferred a more carefully curated collection, but I love the randomness and serendipity of these kind of amateur museums.
Most New Zealanders probably know the Dean's name best for the several players the families contributed to the All Blacks over the years, including Bob Deans, who played in the first ever All Blacks team to tour internationally back in 1905. So, as you'd expect, there's a whole room dedicated to sporting memorabilia. They don't make it like that. They don't yeah. wear them like that. There's also a water-powered turbine built in 1881 that was used to power all of the farm machinery. Although the turbine technically still works, it's currently out of service while the brick well that it sits in is restored. There are issues, if you look and you'll see that the, the, some of the brickwork around the big brick well is starting to fall in. The water's been washed out over the years, the water, groundwater getting in behind it, and it's currently um, trying to establish how they repair that. The whole area is starting to start places trust. So anything's done, you know all the rules and regulations all that carry on, you've got to go through, so you've got to be a little bit careful how you install things, and so it's done to the original state, shall we say. The woods and gardens of Homebush must be beautiful to walk around on a sunny day. On the day I was there though, they were mostly just damp. Maybe one day I'll get to come back on a nicer day. I hope you enjoyed that look around some of Canterbury's early European history. I'll put a few links down in the description if you want to read some more about Homebush and about the Deans family. Don't forget to do all those nice internet-y things like liking and subscribing and leave a comment. Ka kite anō internet!